A 19-year-old girl disappears. The only clues are a series of strange phone calls and a mysterious thump in the night. And the case goes cold for 26 years. Then, a suicide note offers a surprise breakthrough, but can it lead investigators to the last known resting place of Sabrina Long? Hi, I'm Chris, and this is True Crime Recaps. This is a developing story out of Macon, Georgia, and it's definitely a strange one. Here's what we know. Sometime around 12.30 or 1 a.m. on August 14, 1991, Sabrina Long woke up her mother with a bizarre phone call. She wanted to let her know that she was going across the street to help a neighbor with a gift for his mother. The neighbor she was referring to was 21-year-old Keith Lloyd. He was someone Sabrina knew from high school, although he was a grade above her. But as strange as this conversation is, the weirdest part is that she wanted her mother to call her back in half an hour if she didn't hear from her. But her mother was tired and confused and she told her to forget it. She wanted to go to sleep and she didn't imagine her daughter was in any real danger. She told her they'd talk in the morning. Now, looking back on that conversation, she remembered Sabrina sounded annoyed at her refusal, but she didn't give any other details or explain why she wanted her to call her back in 30 minutes. But she never saw or spoke to her daughter again. For decades, the only clues to what might have happened to her were few and far between. Around 1.30 a.m., a neighbor was jolted awake by the sound of two muffled thumps near the side of her house. She sent her husband to see what it was, but by the time he got outside, all was quiet. An hour or two after that, Sabrina's stepfather got home. He noticed her truck was parked out in front, but her keys weren't in their usual place. Her work clothes were on the floor of her bedroom, and her purse and makeup bag were there too. But Sabrina was gone. And this wasn't unusual. She sometimes spent the night at her boyfriend's place, and he figured that's where she was. The only thing out of the ordinary he remembered later was a hang-up on the answering machine that came in at 11.28 p.m. A full day went by and no one realized Sabrina was missing until her boyfriend stopped by her house to check on her. She hadn't been at work since August 13th, not even to pick up her paycheck. The first person the police interviewed was Keith Lloyd, the neighbor Sabrina mentioned to her mother, but he said he never called to ask her to come over and he didn't have any presence for his mother to ask her about. He had no idea why his name had come up and he swore he had been out with his girlfriend at the time she made that call to her mother. The police gave him multiple lie detector tests, and he passed every one of them. Sabrina had graduated high school in 1990, the summer before she vanished, and she aspired to be a model or a teacher, but at the time, she was making ends meet by cutting packaging labels for linen products at a local factory. She was living with her stepfather that summer, even though he wasn't married to her mother anymore, because she and her mother hadn't been getting along. Her mother said later that she was trying some tough love on her daughter by asking her to move out of the house. That's what was going on in her life that summer. On August 13th, her shift ended around 11 p.m. Her truck wasn't running, so she was borrowing her boyfriend's Camaro to get back and forth to work. When she got off that night, she drove it back to his house and he dropped her off at home around 11.45 that night. Police believe that she went inside turned on the Arsenio Hall show, and sat down to write her boyfriend a note. These were the days before texting and emailing, and her stepdad found the three-page letter in the living room next to her high school yearbook. Apparently, the two of them had had some kind of minor argument before he dropped her off, and her note was filled with apologies, declarations of love, and an offer to cook him lasagna for a romantic dinner over the weekend. She also said she had a surprise for him, but... What that might have been, we may never know, because for the next two decades, her case was cold. It was one of those disappearances that looked like it would never be solved. And then, out of nowhere, they caught a break. Keith Lloyd stepped in front of a train in September 2017. On the same day, he was scheduled to meet with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to be questioned again about Sabrina's disappearance. And he left behind a note. The exact wording of it hasn't been released, but according to the Charlie Project, he indicated that he was involved in her disappearance, and he allegedly pointed the finger at someone else too. A person who had never even been on the investigator's radar, not once in 26 years. A woman named Melinda McSwain. She went to the same high school, although she was a year behind Sabrina. 
At the time she was arrested and charged with kidnapping in October 2018, she was working as a motel housekeeper in South Georgia. According to the Macon Telegraph, much to their surprise, she volunteered some information to investigators about the disappearance, facts that haven't been released to the public. And to be clear, she didn't say she killed her, just that she was involved in some way. And the prosecutor said she, quote, confessed to a number of folks that she had a role in Sabrina's disappearance. So, this isn't the first time she's said that, but could it be a false confession? And here's why the prosecutor's office is suspicious about her story. According to the Charlie Project, she told different stories about it, at one point claiming a known criminal associate believed Sabrina was an informant and that's why she was killed. But some of the people she named couldn't have done what she said they did because they were either in jail or not in the area at the time. In September 2021, she was released on bond and house arrest while she waits for the wheels of justice to turn. With her story in mind, let me tell you about a few strange calls that came in in the weeks and months leading up to her disappearance. Maybe they'll reveal more clues about what happened and why. A co-worker said Sabrina was concerned about some obscene calls she'd gotten. A mysterious man was calling to say he wanted to date her. Was she being stalked? Her family also had a story about a mysterious male caller, but it wasn't an obscene call, far from it. They say a man claiming to be from Geico called to schedule an interview with her, but when she called the company later to confirm the time, they had no idea what she was talking about. There was no interview scheduled and they didn't recognize the name he'd given her. That was roughly two months before she disappeared. So, what do you think happened to Sabrina that night in 1991? Let's talk about it in the comments, and be sure to hit subscribe and the bell to keep up with developments in this case and others. Thanks for watching. Amy and I are here with new recaps every week. Until next time, take care.